All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. talked in recent weeks of some of the heroes of faith whose exploits are outlined in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. I trust that what is said has been thought-provoking and maybe beneficial to you in your studies of God's Word. But I want to return to Hebrews 11 for the next few moments. I think there are yet some things that need to be said, outlined, set forth in this great chapter in Hebrews. Now, you remember that it begins that faith is assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things not seen. The footnote suggests the foundation, uh, solid uh, assurance of things not seen. Uh, That's what faith really amounts to when we read God's Word, put it together properly, rightly divide it, understand that it is indeed the product of an infinite mind. Thus faith is begotten in the human heart. And we read the very next statement therein, the elders had witness born to them that they were righteous. Now, the elders under consideration are the older people uh, set forth in the Old Testament. And by their faith, they had witness born to them that they were pleasing to God. Well, then we have the statement, by faith we understand that the worlds have been framed by the Word of God, so that what is seen hath not been made out of things which appear. Why would that particular statement be found right here in connection with these uh, activities that are described as faith? Uh, Friends, this is the way the universe had its beginning. He spake and it stood fast. He commanded and it was done. A... Uh, Psalms 33, verse 9, you remember? Uh, Genesis 1 at verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. That's the way it was done. But someone says that takes absolute faith to be right. <clears throat> right. And when you look around and see the handiwork of God, oh, but in addition to that, you put together what God has said in His inspired Word, there's no question about the accuracy of that statement. Yes, by faith. We understand that the worlds have been framed by the Word of God, so that what is seen hath not been made out of things which appear. Yes, He spake, and it was done. That's the way He created the heavens and the earth. And then we have the statement, uh, By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he had witness, a testimony born unto him, uh, that he was righteous, uh, God bearing witness with respect to his gifts. And through it he being dead, yet speaketh. This bears witness of their fidelity, uh, their faith in God. Abel offered according to God's instructions. And as we've observed many times, Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 4, uh, Cain, a tiller of the soil, offered the product of his labors. And we think, you know, that's, uh, that's fine, but that doesn't please God. No, no. Faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. It doesn't matter how sacrificial we may be or how religious we may be, or how we may desire to please God until we do what God said. We simply cannot please God. That's called faith. And this is a thing that many people today do not comprehend. Oh, it continues there, and it says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. Oh, and he was not found, for God translated him. For before his translation he had witness born to him that he was pleasing to God. The faith bears witness to the conduct of these elders that they were pleasing to God. Uh, That's exactly right. Oh, and then the next verse says, without faith it's impossible to be well-pleasing to him. 
If for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. So Enoch, the seventh from Adam, walked according to God's divine instruction. Why we understand that? And then verse 7, uh, by faith, Noah, being warned of God concerning things not seen, as yet moved with godly fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house, through which he condemned the world with an overthrow, and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. What do you mean Noah uh, condemned uh, the world? Friend, the very conduct characterized by faith in God, that is, the life that complies with the instruction contained in God's divine revelation automatically condemns the world. The world walks according to its own philosophies, its own feelings, its own uh, thinking, uh, its own wisdom that's condemned. The only thing that will stand justified before the Lord is faith. Now, faith cometh of hearing and hearing by the Word of God. How then does faith make itself manifest? Oh, herein the elders had witness born to them that they were pleasing to God, verse 2 of Hebrews chapter 11. When was it said they were pleasing to God? Well, that's uh, one of the things that we want to notice uh, in the next few moments. You know, as you continue there in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, by faith, uh, Noah, when he was called, or not Noah, rather Abraham, when he was called, obeyed to go out into a land which he was received for an inheritance. Oh, and he went out not knowing whither he went. Uh, by faith he became a sojourner in a strange land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for the city which hath the foundations, whose builder and maker is God." So when God told Abraham, get out from thy country, from thy kindred, from thy father's house, etc., you're familiar with that, Genesis chapter 12, Abraham didn't question at all. He just got up and did what God said. What does God call that? Faith. Nothing else in Scripture, Old or New Testaments, is called faith. Faith is a manifestation of my fidelity to God made visible by my obedience to his will. Uh, that's really what faith is all about. <clears throat> and it continues there. It says, by faith, even Sarah uh, received power to conceive seed uh, when she was past age. And uh, thereby there sprang of one, and him as good as dead, as many as the stars of the heavens innumerable. Oh, and as the sand which is by the seashore, friends, He's talking about Abraham. Oh, from Abraham, who was a hundred years old when he begat Isaac, there sprang of him, and he as good as dead insofar as uh, reproduction is concerned, as many as the stars of the heavens for multitude, as the sands of the seashore innumerable. Now, the record says here that these all died in faith, not having received the promises but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims in the earth. Now the Hebrew writer said, And they that say such things make it evident that they are seeking after a country of their own. For indeed, if they had been concerned with the country out of which they came, they would have had opportunity to return. Oh, but now are they seeking a city of their own, that is, a heavenly Therefore, God is not ashamed of them to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. But now I want us to notice verse 17. We've covered this uh, fairly well, not in great detail, uh, but uh, the record says here in verse 17 of Hebrews chapter 11 uh, that uh, by faith, Abraham, now I want, you to, I want you to listen to this. Abraham being tried, offered up Isaac his son, even him to whom it was said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. He assumed that God is able to raise up from the dead, from which he did in a figure receive him back. Wait a minute. What do are, what are we say? Genesis chapter 22. If you were to begin at verse 1, God said to Abraham, Take thy son... Uh, thine only son, whom thou lovest, 
He's not leaving Abraham any margin here for misunderstanding or taking Ishmael. You see, Hagar, the Egyptian handmaid of Sarah, had a son of Abraham also, Ishmael. And uh, Abraham could have said in his heart and mind, well, I'll, I'll take Ishmael. God made it very, very clear. He said, take thy son, thine only son, that's the child of promise, of course, the only child of promise, whom thou lovest, and he did. He loved uh, Isaac uh, beyond measure, uh, and then he named him, even Isaac. He didn't want any mistake made here. And offer him on a mount that I'll show thee. Well, wait a minute now. Abraham could have reasoned in his heart. I mean, immediately there was, well, Lord, you said through, I, <clears throat> what does faith do? Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his jack and he took two young men servants with him and his son and the fire, the wood, and the knife. And they took off, lit out. Now, three days later, he lifted up his eyes and saw Mount Moriah, and God explained to him, that's it. Uh, he left the ass with the two men servants. He put the wood on Isaac, and he carried the fire and the knife, and they went to the top of the mountain. Abraham built an altar. He bound his son, and it's interesting here, uh, Isaac is uh, grown. He's probably stronger or certainly as strong as Abraham. He could have resisted what, it, no, 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 Isaac in complete submission to his father. Abraham bound Isaac, placed him on the altar, and raised the knife to slay him, uh, to offer him unto the Lord. And the angel of the Lord spoke, Abraham, Abraham, harm not the child, etc. You're familiar with that. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Abraham took the child of promise and would have offered him in sacrifice to God. Right. Well, how would God fulfill? That's not my question. As a matter of fact, that's none of my business. What did God say to Abraham? He said, take thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, Isaac into a mount that I'll show thee, and offered him for a sacrifice. What did Abraham do? He took his son, Isaac, into a place that God showed him, built an altar, bound his son, would have offered him. A... Why would he do that? God said to. Yes, but someone says, preacher, that, that doesn't make sense. You... There you have it, exactly. Friends, this is a problem today. It has always been a problem in religious matters in man's response to God's instruction. You see, man wants to be governed by his own intelligence. Uh, that's why Paul wrote that familiar passage in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. He said, the word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Oh, but unto us who are saved is the, the power of God. Uh, for it is written, ah, friends, I'll bring to naught the wisdom of the world. Uh, God wants man to comply with his will. When we do that, that is called uh, faith. Nothing else in Scripture is called faith. The word of the cross, then, is to them that perish <clears throat> foolishness. Why is it foolishness? Because they want to be governed by human intelligence. Uh, they want to be governed by the practical aspects of the matter. Uh, they want to see the end from the beginning. And they do not intend to comply with what they do not understand. Uh, that's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 at verse 14, that the natural man receiveth not the things of God. They're foolishness to him, and he cannot know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Yes, indeed. God clothed his instruction to man in terminology that is not according to human reasoning. No, no. It requires faith for me to submit to the Lord's will. And we need to understand that. We learn that lesson repeatedly from simply reading the Word of God. It is so important. By faith, Abraham, being tried offered Isaac 
His Son. In verse 17, Hebrews chapter 11. What does it mean being tried? Well, now, you remember that when uh, the angel spoke to Abraham as he had the knife already poised to slay his son, do the child of the son no harm. Oh, he saw a ram uh, caught in the bushes by its horns, and he took that ram and offered it to God as a sacrifice instead of his son. And then God said to Abraham, verse 12, now of Genesis chapter 22, Now I know that thou fearest me. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why would God say, take your son, the child of promise, whom you love, Isaac, offer him as a sacrifice? Well, that uh, verse uh, 17 in Hebrews 11 tells us, doesn't it? Abraham being tried, oh, God said, now I know. Well, then men stop right there, and again, we apply human uh, uh, intelligence, and we say, well, just a minute. God is omniscient all the way, right. God knew before this ever occurred that Abraham was faithful. That's not the way it's done. You see? We are made, you remember, in the image and the likeness of God. Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Uh, we understand that. So we are immortal spirits possessed of free moral agency. Right. When do I know that I please God? Or at the same time that God knows that we're faithful. Well, somebody says, but he knows that's not the point. That's not the point. I make the decision. Those two trees in the garden, they were there. And uh, the tree of life, they could eat of that and live forever. Uh, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil probably had some of the prettiest fruit in the garden. It was a delight to the eye. You know, that's one of the temptations. Oh, it was probably some of the tastiest fruit uh, in the Garden of Eden. Sure, lust of the flesh. If it had been ugly and tasted awful, who in the world would want to eat it? And then old Satan convinced Mother Eve that, hey, it's desired uh, to make one wise. Mm, creatures of choice. Tree of life, tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So by faith, Abraham, being tried, offered up Isaac his son. What did God say? Take thy son, thine only son, whom thou lovest, Isaac, offer him as a sacrifice. Lord, I don't see any sense. not a matter of sense. No, no. It is a matter of commitment whether or not you believe God. When is my faith in God made manifest? I want to do what he said. Do what he said. Yeah, but then that doesn't make, that's beside the point. But I don't see, that has nothing to do with it. Faith cometh of hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I think we need to understand that. Yes, sir. The word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Oh, but unto us who are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Oh, the discernment of the discerning will I bring to naught. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For seeing that in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom knew not God, it was God's good pleasure through the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. Friends, I need to understand what Paul is actually saying here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 18 through 29. Why is the terminology having to do with my redemption clothed in such, uh, well, what would appear to be in human reasoning, foolish terminology, foolish language? Why would God require certain things? That's called faith. This is the way sinful man's faith is made manifest. When God speaks, that's it. That's not nearly it. That's not to be adjusted by my thinking. I'm not to alter that by the way I feel about it. I'm, when God speaks, that's it. How do I manifest my total dependence upon my absolute trust in God? Oh, uh, by faith, Abraham, being tried, offered up Isaac his son. Yeah, but that doesn't make sense. Right. That makes faith. He did what God said without question. That's, uh, that's genuine faith. So then it was God's good pleasure through the 
foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Paul teaches here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Is he saying that the gospel is foolish? No, 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 no. What he's saying is, for those that perish, the Word of God doesn't make sense. That's foolishness, verse 18. Oh, that's why he clothed his requirements for those who would be saved in terminology which by human reasoning we consider to be foolish. <laughs> that just that just does please God through the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. Seeing the Jews ask for signs, the Greeks seek after wisdom. Oh, but we preach Christ crucified. Unto Jews a stumbling block. Unto Gentiles foolishness. Hey, but to those who are called, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. Who are these who are referred to here as the called? Oh, those who like Abraham just do what God said. Just, just do what God said. What did God say? Take your son, your only son, and offer him as a sacrifice. What did Abraham do? Took his son, his only son, Isaac, and offered him as a sacrifice. Why would he do that? God said to. God said to. In human reasoning, that's foolish. If you destroy Isaac, how is the promise going to be fulfilled that in Isaac shall thy seed be called? How, you don't reason ahead of God. You don't set aside God's commandments on the basis of your concept. Uh, we, no, no, God has made foolish the wisdom of the world. If you want to be saved, then you simply need to do what the Lord said. You know, it's interesting, <clears throat> in the latter portion of, uh, portion of this uh, Hebrews chapter 11, we are told that uh, these all uh, had witness born to them through their faith. Oh, but he said they attain not the promises. I say, uh, God having provided some better thing through us, that uh, without us they should not be made perfect. What's it? What is the Hebrew writer saying? These men who did various things, uh, they went about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, ill-treated, dwelling in deserts and mountains and caves and holes of the earth, of whom the earth, the world, was not worthy. And, 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 and these had testimony borne unto them by their faith, yet they received not the promises, God having provided some better thing for us, that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. What is he saying? Friends, under the patriarchy, 2,500 years when God had no written law to man, he dealt with the heads of the families, uh, there were faithful men and women. We've read about that right here in Hebrews chapter 11. Under the law of Moses, uh, there were those who kept the law for whom the high priest made atonement one time each year uh, for himself and for the people. And yet, their sins were remembered year by year. Impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Hebrews 10, 4. Well, what is he saying? Well, Hebrews 9, 22 says, without shedding of blood is no remission. But it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Hebrews 10, 4, right. So we're talking about the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, even though these ancient worthies lived by faith, they simply did what God said. Their sins weren't removed. <clears throat> no, no. They did not in fullness receive the promises. Why? Christ had not died upon the cross. You see, He is the mediator of a better covenant, that a death having taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first covenant, they that have been called might receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. That's Hebrews 9 at verse 15. So Christ died on the cross and secured the spiritual well-being of these men and women who ordered their lives by a thus saith the Lord, right, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Friends, how gracious the Almighty is. I live in the last days, oh, in the period of Christianity, governed by the last will and testament of Jesus Christ, validated, sealed, made authoritative by His shed blood. God is good to me beyond measure. What would He require me to be saved? Oh, simple faith. Without faith you can't please God. You remember that, Hebrews eleven six. 6. 
He requires also that we repent. We repent, Luke 13, verses 3 and 5, Acts 17, 30. And we're to confess His name before men, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Uh, but then we're to be baptized for the remission of sins. Well, <laughs> now somebody said, preacher, uh, the, the, the idea of, of being dipped in the water for the remission, what's this? The word of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. Abraham being tried offered the child of promise. And God said to me, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He said, I'm baptized into Christ, verse 27, Galatians 3. Baptized to wash away sins, Acts 22, 16. Baptized for the remission of sins, Acts 2, 38. And I say that's foolish, friends. That's faith. Do what he said. You are watching Preaching the Gospel, a nationwide program brought to you by the Churches of Christ. They would love for you to come and visit their services. Why not come this next Lord's Day? Call us if you need assistance in locating a Church of Christ in your area. Maybe you would like to have your own copy of today's lesson on audio, cassette, or CD. We offer these free of charge. Write down the number of today's program and contact us by calling 1-800-683-3120 or email us at ptgwjw at aol.com. Our mailing address is Post Office Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia, 30721. Often, we get requests from those of you who want to learn more and study further about the Bible. We have available to you, free of charge, a new Bible study series. The first of this six-lesson series will be mailed to your house at your request. This Bible study is also offered free of charge. Preaching the Gospel is under the oversight of the elders at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. It is fully funded by the members of the Churches of Christ. And now, back to James. Hebrews chapter 11, mm, Inspirations Hall of Fame. Now, we haven't said very much about that. Many, many more lessons in Hebrews chapter 11. Read it and read it uh, with an open mind, carefully. Pay attention to what is actually uh, being said. We'll pass from this and deal with some other matters, but Hebrews chapter 11 is just like every other portion of God's Word, vital. I need to understand that faith is made manifest not through human philosophy or reasoning, but faith is made manifest simply by doing what God said. Yes, friends, He is the author of eternal life to all them that obey Him. Oh, that obedience without question is an act of faith, and salvation is by faith. Many people have an idea of faith only and just be religious and do as you pray. It won't work. It doesn't work. No, no. Faith complies with the Lord's will. 